Uh, but I do wonder whether culture in these programs is defined not only in terms of policy, urban design, cultural industry and economy, history, uh, but also in artistic or aesthetic terms. And so, and I think that understanding where your own emphasis are, uh, not only on the urban, but also on the cultural, mm. is key. But ultimately, who, who, what, who is this work for, I think is the biggest question. So what I'm like kind of aiming for is to, to create some form of studio space for more practical research and to find ways to, to bridge art and science. I think it's like, yeah, thinking how to fit your work into journals that, you, that wouldn't be the first obvious port call. Like In terms of having a, a creative expression of this, um, interdisciplinary theoretical approach, is it possible to use that when it comes to publishing? You were uh, mentioning ben earlier in your own journal how you have pieces where there is poetry or there might be I don't know, photography, I don't know, I don't know but I had, I had not encountered that combination of the novel or the, or the narrative um, form of architecture, but with the film, for example. That's very common. I don't know, how do you assess um, the ranking of a journal? Mm. It's mm. more about what is perceived as reputation and yeah. good. I see. And that, and, and that information you get from people that you respect in the field, your supervisor, or whatever, I see. will tell you these are the really good journals. Okay. Reputable journals have what they call article processing charges as well, so that you have to pay to have a journal, a version of your article made immediately open access. You know, someone has to support publishing, and so the question is who's supporting it? A lot of editing work is unpaid, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of peer review, we were talking about this during the break, peer review processes are unpaid. Um, Writing the articles themselves is unpaid. Right, because, you know, sure. so it used to be that, you know, you, you did your, your studies, you got your academic job, and then you, you published, mm -hmm. but now, you know, you have to publish before getting the job. Mm -hmm. In order to get the job, the thing that might bothers me because research, good research, needs time, right? So, yes. how can you just like put this pressure right from the beginning? And, and it's really interesting how those the pressures of a full-time academic job have been integrated now into graduate education. I think it's important not to publish too early. I think, that, and that's why if you are. Um, you are students, you have your supervisors, and you need to use your supervisors for that. You really need to trust their advice. So in thinking about not publishing too early, thinking about the book review, you could publish your book review or a review essay. Uh, but I think, you know, in general, publishers want to see that you've already published part of this work that gives uh, authority to your proposal. You need the, the articles, you know, in your position as an editor. Everyone needs the good work from young scholars who are doing innovative things in the field. Everyone's looking for that. So don't don't feel shy, don't feel that people are doing you a favor. I mean that's what you know, that's what they're there for, to be approached. The other thing, the other perhaps intermediate thing that we haven't talked about, but it's also very important, is um, attending conferences and, and networking. It's important to have intellectual communities to share your work, people will tell you, uh, will criticize you productively, you will grow, your presentation skills will improve, you, you make friends, you, you go places, I mean, it's just absolutely a must. Not for the, you know, for, because you need to professionalize and so on and so forth, but because it is a pleasure. I mean, if you're doing a PhD, it's because you're passionate about this. Nobody does this unless you're really passionate. It's painful. Um, so you might as well find your community. Oops. Do you want to divide into groups and come up with questions about turning articles into a larger product? Product. It could be a book. It could be some other kind of larger goal that you have. It's sometimes not that easy to do because it's, it seems so clear to you. But then <laughs> trying to turn it in words. Oh, that's tough. You can do a monograph as well. Is this your intention? I mean, that's good. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, publish two or three of the chapters as articles and then publish the whole book.
whole thing is about in the best concern. If I publish my article, the same article on new new media and society, there is also a sociological aspect of it. So people in sociology might know that. Mm. But people with media studies might not know this one. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I would really do it out at night. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. in like, the city. Um, yeah, yeah. In, because yeah. this is what I'm talking about, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, at this point, you already have something, you already have some text, you already know which way you're going, you can create some discoveries, you can start thinking. And now I think it's a bit too soon. You, know, you should give yourself freedom. Maybe more drawings and uh, storytelling, this method will be more easier to understand my context, maybe easier to know what is the main idea of my book or dissertation. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about moving from being a PhD student to being um, kind of a scholar in the field. But once you're out there, there's going to be uh, much more scrutiny of your work. You need to understand the kind of statement you, you, you're making and where it fits, and if someone criticizes it, you need to be ready to either defend it or accept the criticism, but to put it somewhere. How do you take a academic piece of work and extend that with a you know, uh, artistic or creative piece? I think it's interesting from the perspective of how do we disseminate knowledge that's generated within the academic community? You have this ability at the dissertation stage to really do something innovative in a way that really will set you up for the changes that are going to be happening in academic culture, which are going to be all about uh, moving away from the strict definition, narrow definition of what knowledge is and how to disseminate. I think that change is taking place.